Hey, it's Carly with Launch Code. In this video, we're going to be adding a property onto our event model class. So in the last video, we created this new model class just in the simplest way that we could with a single name property. Now we want to add back that description data feature that we had previously. So um, no surprise, we want this description to be a string. And we do also want to um, set that property each time a new event object is created. So we will do this here, if I can spell that correctly. That's right. And we'll keep the two string the same, just returning the name of the event. So that's, um, that's it. That's all that it takes really to um, add a new property to the event class. Uh, so hopefully this demonstrates how simple it would be if you wanted to add even more properties to this class. So if you wanted to add things like a location of event, the number of people who are going to this event, what date and time it is, yada, 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 you could do so very quickly. Um, and this should be in contrast to how we've been handling and storing data before. So um, like I mentioned in the last video, we're doing the work now to kind of incrementally remove the data handling that is now taking place within the events controller class um, with a list of event objects. If we wanted to change anything about the nature of that event data, we do so in this event model um, and it doesn't necessarily have any effect on this collection right here so we can we can uh, bundle a lot of information about an event um, very seamlessly in a way that doesn't have repercussions um, if we were to by contrast continue to um, use this collection handling method here um, if we wanted to add event features that uh, were more than just a name and a description, our data handling and data storage would start to get uh, pretty complex pretty quickly and a little bit clunky to maintain as well. So hopefully this demonstrates that um, flexibility that we're talking about using model classes. So now that we've made this uh, property change to our event class, we want to um, you know, make sure that that's reflected in our actual running application. So basically we have to make the same changes that we made um, when adding the, uh, the new model class. We just need to kind of slightly tweak those updates a little bit more to include that description property as well as the name. So when a user adds um, an event via that form, we want to also take in the description um, that is in that add event form and use it to create a new event. So you'll see we have this compiler error here also. Uh, that's always a good indication that, you know, you've done some refactoring in, in one portion of your application. Now you need to sort of wrap up um, any, any um, consequences that that refactoring has with corresponding files. So here um, we've we've changed our, our only event constructor to um, need both a name and a description. So we need to also add that description when we're creating an event. And we're just using the um, form field with the shorthand um, that we use for description. That's coming from the event uh, the add event form that we created at the end of the views exercises. So we have this um, form field for description, just using a, a shorter hand for the name description. Um, we don't actually have to change anything here just because when we created the event model, we didn't remove this form field. Um, we just sort of ignored it for the time being. I just realized that I haven't saved these files. So we'll do that before we move on. Um, but the last item that we do need to make a slight change to, again, similar to what we did when we um, just created the event object itself, is uh, we need to update our view of the, the whole list of events that we have. So we never um, ditched this description header, even though we weren't really using it in the, in the last video. So we can keep that now, and we just want to wire up our actual data, data table cell table data cells um, to use it. I always forget I have to use the arrows here. Um, so to, to actually display the detail of the description of the events, we need to use that getter on the event object that's passed into the razor templates. We saved that one. 
Okay, so let's see this in action. I'm gonna stop running my application um, and restart it. So what we expect is that our, our running application will virtually look the same um, as it had before, except now we are going to be able to use that um, description field within our add event form and um, apply that to the view of the events that we have in our list. So we add an event, let's say we're gonna go track strange loop, which is a developer conference in St. Louis in the fall, something like that. Oh, okay, so we have some error. What did we do? Ah, okay, so I misspelled description. Um, so I'm looking at this error and I see from this stack trace here that um, I just haven't that pesky word. That's why I use the shorthand in that add form. Um, so if we go back to our index view, um, event doesn't have a property called description, but it does called description. Okay, so now I expect if I stop running and start running again that, um, as I was saying, that I expect that our form will, or our application will look virtually the same. Um, but we can practice using this description field without any issues, or form field. So again, we have an event called strange loop, which is a developer conference in St. Louis in the fall. Okay, uh, I'm not sure why that thinks it's Italian. Um, so now our description, our styling's a little bit better because we are using that description field. Um, and we can uh, add another event to our list just to verify. Um, let's say Code for America Summit, a civic minded. I think that one takes place in different places. Okay, so we can easily add another uh, event with another description. So um, hopefully this, this video demonstrates how flexible using model classes are to um, shape this application data. So if we were to, like I mentioned, um, add yet another property and another property, we could easily add those data features into our event class itself. And we could also very quickly and sort of routinely um, continue to uh, display that level of event detail within our application as well um, with just a few changes.